right, I've got Larry here, um, and we're going to go over, we have notes, what we did in this uh, first run in the warehouse in our 8x8 tent with eight 30-gallon living soil pots. In case you haven't watched before, they are uh, the new living soil pots. Ooh. Nice. We'll go over them at some point on what makes them amazing. But that's them for now. And if you want to see more of them, go back and watch other videos. So basically what we did is we followed our standard operating procedures for um, the techniques or different things we're seeing people be able to use and still pass heavy metals testing. Yes. Caveat, there's no guarantee you're going to pass heavy metals testing, but... We've worked really hard on getting a certain system going to where we feel like the average person could somewhat, you know, could pass yes. and be fine. We're seeing a higher percentage of passes than fails. Yeah, and absolutely. actually, if you will stick to what we tell you, you typically pass. Yeah. Again, not 100% guaranteed. Don't quote us on and that. you get lots of data on the way, too. And that's... You do get that, lots of that's, data. That's a, you can't you even do. put a price on that. So this is just going to kind of go over what we do, our standard operating procedure. Um, we did it in the tent. We do it with our commercial customers, and it's been working very well. Um, so we'll do a sap test the last week or two of veg and then that'll take a week or two to get back and then we'll that'll give us roughly two weeks to do full years to correct any issues we ran into um, if you're a home grower you're probably not sap testing you probably don't even know what sap testing is because honestly 90 percent of our commercial customers don't know what sap testing is and it's pretty but sad again it's one of those things that give you so much data it's kind of it hard to to turn your nose to it, I would say everybody should get sap testing and soil testing. Yes. So with sap testing, um, you want to run over what yeah. sap testing, how so, it works? What so it what sap testing is, you, you get 25 old leaves, 25 new leaves, and it tells you exactly what the plant is taking up. And it actually gives you kind of an insight of where you're going to be at in the future as well. Versus like a soil test that tells you everything that's in your soil. But that, you know, we all know about mobile and immobile nutrients as well. So things aren't always available. Gonna, yeah, they're not always available. They're not always going to be yep. on this paper where it's where your soil is versus what your sap test is saying. It's not always it's right not. next to and, each other. And the all. one thing I'm noticing is that a lot of companies are pushing, pushing soil testing. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're pushing soil testing through Logan Labs, which is fine. Um, but what we're seeing with sap testing is that you'll get a soil test back and say it's high in manganese. Well, then your plants are deficient in manganese after you do a sap test. But if you just go off that soil test, which everybody's pushing, you think you're okay, but really you have a deficiency. Um, that's why we think sap testing is so important. We've seen the data, we see the difference it can make, we see that a soil test is just not complete at all. Yeah, there's like, a lot more to it's, it's a, a piece, it's an important piece, but every cultivar sucks up different. Um, every environment is different. Uh, it's just not across the board. If you were only going to do one, I think a soil test is great, but a sap test is pretty interesting. A, a soil honestly. test is just more comfortable for people. It so is. yeah, they're always going to lean towards that first. But yeah, I, I agree. A sap test is absolutely, if you just need one of the two, a sap test will get you a lot more information. It really would, but I would do both. Yeah, both is I would 100% do both. Yep. So we did the sap testing, corrected um, with foliars. And we used these products on this run. That's um, what do I you have did. that? Oh, there yeah, we go. I do. So we did, uh, we just did one foliar at two weeks, and we used blue gold um, C4 calcium at five milliliters per gallon, blue gold super mag, three milliliters per gallon, um, organics alive VN half teaspoon, it's over there, per gallon, and organics yeah. alive VPK one teaspoon this. per gallon. Mm -hmm. And then that's all on sap. Yeah, that's actually all we did on the yeah. sap. Uh, and just to read it, we did it one time for two weeks. So yeah. it's two applications total. It took us two weeks, but just one time a week for two weeks, we applied those as our foliar to correct uh, via our sap test. And then, uh, yeah, we also, um, going through our grow, we always, we always like to just supplement our grows with VN, or Organics Alive in general. Uh, but they work both really well as a foliar and a soil drench. So they do. We, we use uh, Organics Alive once a week. And I well. think what's important about what we've seen so far um, when we're foliaring with these products and those products is we're still able to pass testing. Yeah. 
Um, I think it's the time we're doing it. I think it's that first one to two weeks of flower. After that, I, if I had to pass a test, I would never spray anything on my plants ever. I'd be too scared. Yeah, and anytime someone's asked me what can we do, is is cautious as we like to be that's what i like organics alive so much there's there's no heavy metals in their products so so you can be a lot more aggressive using organics alive products versus other people in the world or even just dry amendments unfortunately yeah yeah, yeah. totally um all right so the aerometer yeah so okay so i had somebody <laughs> leave a comment on youtube about how i was a shitty boss because i didn't give enough direction to the new guy and that was all my fault i don't disagree that's fine <laughs> um but to be fair i wasn't the one in charge of that yeah that's my but fault. My it's fault really not a big you. deal um i think overall i'm glad it kind of went that way because matt has he learned a lot yeah no I actually we him. have two other people both yeah. of them learned a yeah. lot and we were just talking about it off camera we we absolutely trust them to run another yep. grow that size. Of course, it's an eight by eight tent. Because uh, by they, themselves. they worked they out the it. aerometer kinks mm -hmm. in one grow. Yeah, like yep. they saw underwatering and they saw overwatering all at the same time, and now they've got it. They've got it figured out. They know how to wait. They know what to look for the next day. They know how much to do the first day and wait to the second day to see what the reading is. Um, and evenly watering. That was another yes. issue they had. There, it was just watering in one spot of the pot, yeah. and it got for it got fixed. Yeah, but. Yes, I'm the boss. It's my fault. I'll take that. Um, oh, the time. So, yes. Yeah. So what caused the uh, the newer growers to be in charge of this? Well, Chris and I, we have our set schedule here at Redbud, and a new a new we had a new employee come on. And long story short, it's so hot in the Oklahoma summers that we switch the light cycle from being on during the day to being on during at night. Yes. So what that means is Gray or Matthew, same guy. Uh, has to get he had to get here a little bit earlier during the day uh, uh, in the morning so he could work the work the grow by himself yep. and it ended up him being by himself yeah all the time yeah, yeah. it was it was awesome but good for him even with ac during the day we had lights on 8 a.m to 8 p.m with ac it wouldn't keep the temps we wanted yeah we had to switch it from 8 p.m on to 8 a.m or no we switched from 11 to 11. yeah 11 p.m on 11 a.m. off and at that schedule we were able to keep our temps which actually around 76 yeah. yeah we were able to keep it right at about 76 um, and the humidity stayed at around 60 percent the whole mm. time um, so far I haven't seen any mold I know no, no. when you get into it you know you might see a spot or two it just happens I'm not going to say it's 100 percent mold free but I haven't been able to see anything off I the haven't seen it and what I noticed in terms of mold uh it's from the drying process it's it's bad bad practicing yeah, bad, bad practices <laughs> of drying uh, not chopping yeah. the plants up enough yeah. a bunch of variables but it's all in the drying yeah. process so then we've got oh there's a gnat uh got co2 and so we had co2 on this run i know a lot of people that are home growers don't use co2 it's not that expensive to set up and your yields no. are gonna just go it, it, crazy. it at least doubles it yeah. I, I, it, it with can, an asterisk, that's a major yeah, asterisk. I don't know about yeah. at least. <laughs> but it at definitely it's looks possible. like it doubles it, yeah. you know? No, I think you can get 30 to 40% is pretty safe. Yeah, more. no, that's... And you're that's, not doing anything else. And you're not spending a lot of money to do that. Your first round is going to pay for it. Yeah. The setup. Um, it really is. And so what we do is we start out at 500 parts per million, which our setup with the CO2 off was running at about 550. Yeah, 550, 560. Yeah. And then um, we run that the first two weeks of flower, and then we go to 800. And we'll run that to, I think, for a week. And then we went up to 1,000. And we ran that until this last week. And then we bumped it back down to 500. All the way down to 500. Yeah, yeah. so now it's back down to 500. Um, and I, I think they look pretty good. Man, yeah, there's, I mean, it truly is on autopilot now. It is. Come, you know, in the flower time, so. And I think considering we didn't even have the light at 100%, we had it at 90. Yeah, we didn't keep it at 100% the entire time. didn't veg the best because mm -hmm. one, you know, a few of them got too close to light, so we took it down to 90. If we were at 100, I think we could get even and more. And one light. of the strains in there, tropical cherries, it, it always grows really short it while does. the other ones are taller, yeah. and that's kind of on us. We should have chose better yeah. strains, but it is what it is. Um, I don't see on here, but let's talk about this because that was part of an issue. Yeah, so kind of with the watering, uh, it when was. it was getting underwatered, obviously we're getting dry pockets in the soil. Yep. So um, we we prefer Thermex uh, yes. just because it's so cheap. And this bottle of Thermex, especially for a home grower, will last, last forever. The way really? we do it is, let's say I got my five gallon bucket of water, I'll literally just droop, 
And as soon as it, it drips, I'm counting that as, oh shit, I've done too much. Yep. I've done too much. Yep. And it, it's not too much, but yeah. pretend it is. And, and that's all you need. And it lasts so much. It lasts a long time. It does. A price per use rate, you can't beat it. No. Now, somebody's going to obviously say, hey, there's the magical Q powder and yeah. everybody uses it and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's way too expensive. Yeah. And if you look at the data, from what I've seen, unless it's changed, it's only a couple percent more in saponins. Two percent, I believe. Yeah, a couple percent, two or three percent. It's not worth the money. I wouldn't no. use it. Um, you know, there's the other argument. I use it as an IPM product. I wouldn't do that either. I know people are doing it, but... We use bugs for our... Yeah, we have other... Yeah, we'll we we'll use, go through that. I wouldn't bugs. trust, personally, saponins for my IPM. That's not the route to go. Yeah. Um, okay, so now, that being said, let's go over our IPM yeah. that we used. Um, so, so during veg, we, we rotate Mondays and Fridays. We'll, we'll use Impede and Sup Oil X. Yes. Uh, those are just oil-based sprays. Uh, obviously, you make sure the lights are off if you ever use them. Sup Oil's oil. Impede is actually like a thick soap. Thick soap. Yeah. Oil. Like the craziest thick of soap ever. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't want to use it for soap. It'd burn you. But regardless, it's, it's really nice, light, and easy. Uh, and yeah, that's it works really it well. And for and veg, it works especially. Really well. This is really geared more towards commercial or home growers, but for commercial use, two and a half gallons for the price is it's it's great. I yeah. mean, it's great. And, and then we do that the fir uh, up to the first one to two weeks of flower. Yep. And then at that point, we'll switch over to predators. Exclusive. Yeah, exclusively predators, and so we won't spray anything on the plants the whole rest of the round at all. And so we used um, Cucamaris, and for that we used 15 sachets, uh, Californica. Actually, was it the Californicus? One of these came in a shaker this time. I gray I think applied them. Yeah, I think it was the Californicus <laughs> that came in a shaker this time. So the Cucamaris were in, a, in sachets. And we actually did 30. Oh, yeah. So we did 30 for the, for the tent. So 15 and a 4x4, four four, 30 and the 8x8. Eight eight. The Californicus was a shaker this time, but I actually just ordered Predators for the other tent in the store, and they have those in sachets now. So we're doing 15 of those if you buy the sachets per 4x4 four four square. Yeah. Um, the Green Lace Wing eggs, it's basically a card, and they've got a bunch of eggs glued to it, which is insane. Um, you, it comes in a pack of 5,000. I can't find them any smaller, and we just basically hang all of those up. Um, we didn't use Aureus this time because we don't have any thrips. No. So if you do have thrips, Aureus is a great thing, but we didn't need to use that. Um, the Hypoasmus Miles, aka Stradiolalaps, um, we applied 25,000 of those per 4x4. Four four. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, 25,000 for a 4x8 four, uh, four eight or 8x8 eight eight would be fine. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. way overkill. Rove beetles, we just order 500 and we apply the 500 in our 4x4 four four and we apply the 500 in the and eight those, eight. those are absolute must. They are. You need they those. They really do. Absolutely. Um, and then the nematodes. And we use two different nematodes. We use the SF nematode, the HB nematode. The SF nematode is a predator, and the HB is for nutrient cycling. If you aren't using the HB nematodes, the heterobacterias. Yes. Yeah. Can you do it? Can you do it? Ah. No. Anyways, the HB, <laughs> the HB nematode, um, look them up. They will, uh, if they don't have a food source, I believe, they'll start eating bacteria. Am I wrong on that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they do help nutrient cycling. So I, I think they're worth using 100%. Um, that takes us down to soil test. Yeah. So we did a soil test. And even though it's brand new soil, here's the thing that people don't think about. Um, you get that brand new soil. Let's say you buy soil not from us. I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to name a name, but let's just say you buy a soil from somebody that uses Logan Labs and they balance it perfectly out of the bag. And so that soil is exactly what you need. And then you put a plant in it and you start watering it. Well, in one week, it's less. In two weeks, it's already less. And so three weeks, four weeks, you're deficient. So it went from perfectly balanced to being deficient. And so regardless of whose you use, um, we actually, ours is not balanced out of the bag. Ours is a more overkill type yeah, situation. It's, it's to where, added. Yeah, so where you're at three or four weeks, then you're kind of coming back down to normal ranges. And a lot of people find issue with that, and I get that but we would rather you not have to do what we do and just keep adding and adding to try to make it perfect yeah. because realistically, I know a home grower is not going to probably soil test after four weeks. We are in a situation where we can do it because that's what we do. Yeah. Um, but that being said, we think it's important to soil test. And uh, this was the soil test. I did show you. And then here was our recommendations. And if you haven't been following us, um, our recommendations will give you grams per square foot of what you need, a total of ounces, a total in pounds, and then a total heavy metals load for that recommendation per container. 
So we'll enter in whatever that container is, uh, the size, and it'll give us, so like for this one, copper was two milligrams per kilogram, roughly, of copper were added. And it goes through arsenic, cadmium, cobalt, copper, lead, mercury, molybdenum, nickel, selenium, zinc, and chromium. That doesn't guarantee you're not going to pass. I mean, just, we're, pass. Yeah, we're just really excited about that. Yeah. So. It, it, it doesn't guarantee you're going to not fail for heavy metals, but we want you to use this to track that every time you do a, a top dress, based off our recommendations, you know what you added into the system. And if you are passing, we know that we're doing safe things. And if you're not passing, we can look back and at least have data to look at. Because some of the biggest things, what we've learned, there's everybody always has an answer for heavy metals and there's not a straight oh, up answer. The worst case scenario I can think about if you're failing for heavy metals is you're gonna have to grow to, to chop down. Yeah, you just gotta to pull, pull the heavy metals out. You gotta That's do a sacrificial crop that you have to pull all the metals out with if yeah. you're trying to save them. Bugs, roly yep. roly polies. Yeah. So let's what's some roly polies? Yeah, that, roly we hear polies. that one a lot. Yeah, all you gotta no, do is add roly polies and they'll take all the heavy metals mm -hmm. out. Well, that's not true. Yeah. Um, I think uh, silica. Silica will H block humic acid. Yeah. Hang on. Silica. So silica will block the uptake, but you gotta test the silica product for heavy metals. Humic acid yeah, will block the one. uptake, but it's full of arsenic Super mostly. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you gotta watch that. So. What we've noticed is you just have to pay attention to the products you use, you have to make sure they're tested, and you have to be conservative about what you do. If you're doing teas every week with um, compost and guano and molasses. Molasses, man. Man, you, you're just gonna run into problems. It'll, it'll, yeah, run into problems according to testing. You know, yes, I yeah. always tell people three lefts make a right. So at the end of the day, if you're not testing this stuff and you have great product, yeah. disregard what we just said but a lot of our customers are commercial and they do yes, care about how much heavy metals they have to add and so when you're doing a tea every week yes although you're feeding your plants and that is what we want it's hurting you in in the long run because you're gonna mess around and fail yeah but to be fair i don't think the heavy metals numbers are dangerous no i think yeah. they're very arbitrary uh... What can we, oh, let's go to, what was our, this was our top dress? So let's go over the top dress. So based off what that soil added. test and our recommendations. Um, we added 1.84 grams per square foot of uh, fishbone meal. And then the most, the rest was just micronutrients essentially, yeah. but 0 0.06 grams of zinc, 0.46 grams of manganese sulfate, 0 0.07 of iron sulfate or ferrous sulfate. Uh, 0.17 of copper sulfate and 0 0.07 of boron. So, I mean, it's, it's literally like, it's nothing. It's so it, it, it is nothing. And it, a lot of times, especially from a home grower's point of view, you want to add stuff and you want to keep your plants the best you can. But a lot of times, especially these sheer amount of soil tests we get, I see an excess versus a deficiency. Yep. And we always go under the thought process of you can always add, yep. but you can't take away. And so, yeah, we, we like to go uh, conservative and we've seen great results. And following a schedule set by a mm -hmm. company that's trying to sell you stuff is going to get you unbalanced. It is really hard. That's why it took it's us just, over a year to come up with a schedule to that's pretty not a much schedule. say, it's not even a schedule. It's pretty much to say, well, you need to get this tested and then do yep. this according to that yep. test. And that, it's just the safest way we found for everybody to follow a standard operating procedure versus just following a schedule because again, you, it can add up. Those it things does. can add up in your soil, especially when people are in like little small pots. Yeah. Can add up. Um, so we did that. So yep. test. Oh, supplements. And then yeah, I kind of Which glanced isn't over it before. Which is 100% necessary, but. Yeah, it's not 100% it's not necessary, but again, any grower, they want the best stuff they can have. So uh, we love Organics Alive products because no heavy metals and just the way it works in living soils. It doesn't just add an abundance of salts or anything it like add that. Anything. It does Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't throw off a soil test. No, actually. It's, it's it's great. It's, it's like really the cool. plant uses it what it needs. There's never you don't the use rate's so low, a half teaspoon, teaspoon, even if you went up to two teaspoons mm -hmm. a gallon. It doesn't we don't see it add up in the soil and reflect on the soil mm -hmm. test ever. And then what what we do is like during veg, uh, we use VN and FPF, just one teaspoon of VN and it's kind of the same way I use the Thermix. I just do a drop of FPF. Yeah. It's technically one milliliter per gallon. Uh, but yeah, I do that during veg. And then during flower, I use 
FPF and VPK, but I still actually use the VN, but just half the label weight, which yep. is half a teaspoon. And we're doing this just once a week. Every other day is just water and that's it. Yeah. So not every other, but like well, every, all the other every, six every days. Every other so time we, yes. yeah. yeah. We so we water six water. days a week, do that in some combination mm -hmm. once a week. And that's yeah. literally, and that doesn't have to be done, but I do think it adds to the final product. Yeah, I think it adds I, to I yield agree. and quality. I, I'm a big fan of them. I'm not even gonna yeah. lie. Um, and then, so that's basically what we did, what we need to correct. Yes. So that we screwed up things that we could correct is yeah. again, we were getting newer growers involved in this. It's not just me and Chris. Yeah. Um, we really need to make sure in the future that they truly understand yeah. watering and not to overwater, not to underwater. And then uh, as funny as it sounds to water the pot evenly, yep. don't just water one portion because it's then the other side is going to be more dry. And then we didn't, we trellis like shit. Yeah, that was on my, that was my fault. I did one layer of trellis and then a second layer of trellis and thought that was cool. And then, I don't know, things happened and we need more trellis. Yeah. Three, three layers of trellis is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Uh, and then another thing that we could work on is just being more consistent with just defoliating the dead leaves. Uh, I don't know if you follow us at all. We actually don't defoliate much of at all because no. we believe the leaves are the solar panels, yep. but obviously when a leaf is dead, it's not doing totally. anybody any justice. Yeah. And we do, um, I actually talked to somebody on the phone just like, I don't know, say yesterday, and we were talking about how we don't really defoliate, defoliate but yeah. we do to a degree. We do thin it out so there's enough we airflow. we lollipop it for sure. We do. So like shade the legs, the bottom third of the plant mm -hmm. is basically just bare branch. Mm -hmm. And then the top part, we just want to make sure... We do take out, I'd say we take out 20% of the little thin branches through there. We take out branches, get, not leaves. Not That's leaves. the big difference. Yeah, we don't, yeah. we don't pluck it down to like where it looks like this. A Charlie Brown tree. Yeah, I think that's more of a hydro thing, and I think that should stay with hydro practices, and you can complain that I said that. That's fine, but with our preference. experience, yeah, it is a personal preference. To me, it adds, again, we have commercial customers. Mm -hmm. To me, it adds too much labor. Uh, I mean... Shit's going for five to eight hundred a pound yeah. right now, and you're gonna sit in there and spend eight hours every fucking day pulling leaves off. That's where a lot of people don't don't realize is that man, people have more than just an eight by eight tent or a yeah. four by eight tent or a ten by ten tent. They have full commercial facilities in which spending time like that is just, the time. I the mean, biggest, it's just yeah. you would yeah, it's just comical. Like it's yeah. not even something you could do, and it's not necessary. We've no, proven it's that it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back to our video of our commercial grow, how we keep it more. 70s bush style than charlie brown christmas tree yeah. uh it works fine yeah it works great mm -hmm. uh, but again to each their own there's nothing wrong with that honestly i think that's everything yeah and then again scrog those plants down better yeah scrog the plants down better mm -hmm. just train them better um i think this next round will be in a lot better position even though it turned out great and we will have some video and some pictures coming up because yep. we've got a photo shoot we're going to be doing so if you're not following us on instagram that would be the time you should follow yeah, us that on would instagram be cool. Um, and if you're not subscribed to us, you should subscribe to us. Because we do have a lot more videos coming. Mm -hmm. um, we've been working on a lot of projects and a lot of new products that we're going to be dropping. Um, like the pots, like you know, the like, pots. just like the pots. Yeah, like the pots. We have this uh, everywhere from, what, one, one gallon to... To, <laughs> to four by eight beds, yeah, four which by are eight behind beds. us, which I don't think you can see a four by four bed Probably not, there. No, I don't, no, I don't think you can see it. So Speaking um, of, though. Also, a special shout out to Orange Oil. Yeah, a lot of people real. I talked to them. before I started working here. I didn't even know what orange. I just used ISO and cleaned everything down really well. Or bleach. Well. Or Everybody bleach. Yeah, bleach. bleach works too. But orange oil to clean your grow, it's it's the best. It works crazy. It, it works really so well. We actually cleaned this table off for this because we were using this in the back, and it looked like shit even after yeah. we cleaned it three and there's times. Yeah, reflections now. And we used it. orange oil. It looks great. It's great. At least from here, it looks great. It <laughs> might look like shit on film. I don't know. So yeah. if uh, you're not following us on uh, Instagram, follow us on Instagram. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Be on the lookout for more updates and more info. And uh, thanks for listening.